Amen. <clears throat> I think we've had a good service so far. If you are not smiling, try to smile. <laughs> because you are in for promotion. Say, I'm in for promotion. I am in for promotion by the Holy Spirit. It's going to be wonderful with me. Because the Holy Spirit has no barriers. Hallelujah. While I had prepared power and promotion, I had actually sent it to the media since Thursday. But then as I kept on praying, because you never stop preparing. If you are going to do God's work until the last minute, God can still do anything he likes. It is his church. It is not anybody's church. And so he has priority and prerogative on whatever he wants to do. So I think it was on Friday afternoon he said, uh, prayer. I think what you have prepared is good. But you know, I am not just good. I am most high. So he said, um, let them praise the Lord. And I think we've enjoyed praise since we started. And we are going to continue praising. And on Friday, it is going to be a healing service. I guarantee you, by the Spirit, there will be healings. There will be healings today also. <clears throat> but um, when God said, praise me. Let everything that has bread do what? Praise the Lord. Why is God demanding praise? Why is God saying, focus on me and lift me up? Isn't God the most high? Isn't it seated in heaven? He cannot be displaced or replaced. But why is God saying, I want you to so focus on me? It is because, listen... Promotion does not come from the east or the west. It comes from, from above. How would you pick a little girl, a virgin girl, a young girl? Listen, almost uneducated. If you don't know, Mary wasn't educated. And the angel came. You are most honored. You would be the mother of Jesus. Look at the person by say that's promotion. How would you go to the bush and look at a boy who has been abandoned by his parents and who is now caring for his parents? He ensures there is meat at home. He ensures there is milk at home. He ensures there is clothing at home because meat, milk, and clothing come from the sheep. And the boy is facing lions and bears without Daddy, mommy, senior brother's help. And the Bible says, God said, Samuel, I have found the next head of state. And he was less than 15. Look at the person by you say that's promotion. It doesn't come from the east or from the west. It comes from God. Look at the person by you say yours is just around the corner. <laughs> Promotion. How would somebody who does not even desire that would go anywhere and it is written we must pick up somebody and then at the end of the day out of 1,200 they pick somebody who did not even know her way. That's promotion. Out of 1,200 didn't attend private school because daddy didn't have money for private school. Don't look at anybody. Look at me. <laughs> That's promotion. That's promotion. That's promotion. And I can go on and on and on. How would you pick a couple that we are worshipping the moon and stone? If you don't know worship moon and stone, listen. It's Abraham. Who haven't married for more than 40 years did not have a baby. That means failure. That means barrenness. That means fruitlessness. He had, 
listen, by custom, to marry a second because he wasn't a believer. But he did not. And then God went to his bedroom and said, Abbe, you are going to be the beginning of a new nation, Israel. Promotion. Why would you pick on an old woman who even when God was talking, she said, this man, God, oh, he doesn't know that we don't enjoy anything in the bedroom anymore. Because I'm old, my body is fatigued, my boobs are already flapping, nothing is working. And look at him talking that I would have a child. <laughs> and she was laughing at God. And God said, Whether you like it or not, you will get promoted. Look at the person by you say, Today is your day of promotion. <laughs> you know, when God wants to promote, He doesn't sometimes even wait for you. When heaven had made a decision, it is executed on earth. And there will be a manifestation of his decision to promote somebody this afternoon. If you are one of them, say me. That's why Psalm 75 verse 6. Promotion does not come from the east or from the west. Oh, you are trying to hang on to that boss. You are trying to hang on to that employer. You are trying to hang on to that person who smiles. Or the person who doesn't even look at you. And yet, the promotion is coming from where you do not expect. Because God cannot be limited. You serve an unlimited God. I will tell you why. I'm going to give you a few reasons. And then we will get into God. Watching whether you want him to promote you this afternoon. In Isaiah chapter, Jeremiah 29, 11. And here God was talking. He was talking to a backsliding people. A people who had abandoned him. And he said, Jerry, come, come, come. You are my prophet. You are my spokesman. Go and tell them that even though they are in captivity, they are suffering. Things are tough. They don't know the way out. Tell them, my thoughts towards them are thoughts of peace. God's thoughts concerning you are good. Golden, gracious, great, and wonderful. Tell them, my thoughts are thoughts of peace, and I will give them my own end. That's why in this church we are called destiny. The God of destiny will give you his destiny. Goliath may stand in front of you, he will collapse. A lion may come against you, the lion will die. A bear may come for your children, listen, that bear will die. What God had portioned in heaven will come your way. Because I know the thoughts, God says, I know. Others may not know, angels may not know, your parents don't know. The pastor sometimes doesn't know, but he says, I know the thoughts. You don't know everything God knows about you. But he will bring them to pass. I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Thoughts of peace. Toward you. Thoughts of, say towards me. God has thoughts of peace for me. And he will bring it to pass. Because God has no limitations. Hallelujah. That's what he said. That's what he said. Let me go quickly to. You say, but that's Psalm. 75, Old Testament. Jeremiah, a people that had even backsliding. Let's come to the church. 1 Peter chapter 2. And we're going to look at verse 9. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. I want to make you see. <clears throat> but, having said a number of things that are not pleasant, negative, it then says you. But you are a chosen generation. <laughs> Say to yourself, I'm chosen. I am God chosen. I am Holy Spirit chosen. I am heaven chosen. And that's why I am a new creation. Listen, when you understand that you are a new creation, listen to me, the genetics of your parents are no more in you. 
the genetics of your parents are no more in you. If, if they are still in you, then you are an old creation. If God says, you are, I made you a new creation. You are so different from the old that everything old is not part of you anymore. Listen, that's not to make you think that you might not be tempted to believe a lie. Because many pastors have preached, many prophets have preached, hey, come to the world. You are a new creation. God says you are not like Adam who sins. You are not like Abraham who sins. You are not like David who sins. You are not like Jeremiah who was discouraged. You are brand new. <laughs> Tell somebody I'm brand new. Say God say so. The Holy Ghost says so. The Bible says so. And I believe it. Your mind may not receive it. Because your mind is struggling. Struggling with the thoughts of God. Struggling with the will of God. Struggling because over many years, you have, you have had it. Yes. Um, if any man is in Christ Jesus, he is a new if any man is in Christ, in Christ, in Christ, all things have, ah. But you then have temptations that you saw, trials in your grandparents, in your parents, you see it coming. Yes, it's trying to find out whether you agree with what God is saying now or you agree with what people have taught you. Jesus was tempted. You will be tempted. And temptation basically is trying to find out whether you believe God or you believe whatever, whether you choose to unlearn the negatives you've learned before. And I'm still unlearning some things I've learned before. I'm just being frank with you. Everybody knows that I'm not even an angel. That, that's why he says, you are a chosen generation. You, tell yourself, I am chosen. Oh, say it with conviction. I am God chosen. I'm Holy Ghost chosen. I am heaven chosen. Satan, get away. Start understanding. I am a chosen generation. I am royalty. I'm not begging to be royal. I'm not applying to be royal. I am already royalty. Hey, I am royalty. I am royalty. I am royalty. I have heavens. That's, you know, you have diplomatic immunity. No, I have heavens immunity. Because his righteousness is on you, any weapon fashioned against you does not prosper. When you know his righteousness, God's righteousness, if you don't know it, the righteousness is there, but because you don't know it, you will fail. You will fall. Because as a man thinks, and you think what you believe. That's why I said, Friday, it's miracle service. Because I'm going to open your eyes to some things that I am unlearning. Errors that I have learned. I like John, John Austin. He said, I had my first degree. After that, I went to seminary. I had my master's degree in the seminary. And um, he said, in the seminary, I had my master's degree. I came teaching. And for 19 years, he was teaching what God said. You are not teaching my word. Was he born again? Yes. But 19 years, 19 years, when he came to know the truth, one day when he knew the truth about healing, because he was taught in the seminary, healing went with the old people. There is no more healing. They brought a crippled girl, and he had come to know the truth because he associated with Kenneth Higgins. And he prayed. And everybody saw that crippled, cr 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 stretched out. So he looked at it. He himself was surprised. But he had been taking this word that no, 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 no. Listen to me. Somebody in the church, in the congregation, 
looked at him and said, John, don't you know that the devil also works miracles? True story. Told him, somebody in the congregation, said, John, don't you know the devil also works miracles? But he decided, if you don't believe God, it does not matter. I have chosen to believe God. <laughs> Touch the person by saying, I have chosen to believe God. Ah, our time is going, and I've not even started. <laughs> it's because by the grace of God, it is well with me. <laughs> you know, when you are pregnant, because you'll be having the word and having the word and having the word, uh, EDD, there is no EDD for a real pregnant pastor. I am a chosen generation. I am royalty, and yet I'm a priest. As a priest, listen, I have, listen, the authority to declare good, and it will be good. When there is leprosy, you go to the priest. It's the priest that says, leprosy, no more. And that person gets out of the antisocial place and joins the normal society. That's the priest. And remember, Jesus, even in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John would say, go and show yourself to the priest because that was the law. But after Pentecost, you don't show yourself to the priest because what the Holy Ghost has done, he has perfected. We are not Jews who are to go to the priest to certify our healing. We are a chosen We are new. Ah, you are getting it. Tell somebody you are getting it. <laughs> then he says a holy nation don't play with holiness that's the problem in the church they play with holiness and they then want to enjoy God never shall we continue in seeing that grace may abound God forbid no compromise stand where God wants you to stand and see his glory manifest through you he then said, this is the next one, and I'm going to go from here. He said, you are his special person. Tell yourself, I didn't know I'm special to God. Oh, tell yourself, I didn't know I'm special to God. Oh, I didn't know I'm special. Oh, God sees me as special. I begin to see myself as special. Your color doesn't matter. Your age doesn't matter. You are a woman doesn't matter. <laughs> you are disabled in whichever way doesn't matter. Begin to see that God sees you special. And begin to tell yourself, I am special. God has made me special. I accept it. I believe it. I confess it. I think it. I believe it. I say it. Say, I am special. Say, God made me special. I stand as a special person. I am not ordinary. Oh, are you saying it? You are special. That, he gives us the reason. You may proclaim the praises of him who has called you out of darkness. He knew you were in darkness. He called you out of darkness into not just light, marvelous. Hey, hey. During the worship, I sat at the back. I saw some people, when they were dancing, they did like this. Mm -mm. Mm, they were really <laughs> marvelous. Not just light. There is light, but there is marvelous light. Here is light. This light is not like the light in the stadium. The light in the stadium that you show, and a stadium is sometimes, big stadiums that have athletic things, has a 400 meter um, circuit, and the lights would show and they will pick out just one person. So, and that's still not marvelous. That's earthly. We are talking about heaven. We are talking about God. We are talking about excellence. We are talking about angels. <laughs> that he called you out of darkness that you should manifest, proclaim, speak, say his marvelous 
light. Say, I am ready. Say it again. Say it again. One more time. Hmm. Now, as I get into, I've given you theory. I'm going to take you into practical. Because if you tell people the beauty, but you don't show them how to get there, they would only imagine it. They cannot possess it. Now, I want to take you to where you would possess it. Are you ready? Hmm. Let me have who is on the keyboard and on the drum. Because today, you see, when you praise God, listen. When you praise God, there are four things that happen. Number one, you give him your attention. From giving him your attention, you give him, listen, your affection. You give him your attention, God, it's you I want to praise. It's like I look at somebody that has come in and I want to speak to you. I look at you. So I give you attention and I want you to give me attention also so two of us can talk. Edward say attention. attention. Number two, it's not just attention, then there is affection. Because that's praise. Say, God, you are so good. Mm -mm. God, you mean I am special in your sight? Hey, hey. You give him your affection. And from your affection, you give him your adoration. And from your adoration, you then get lost in worship. When you don't know who is on your right, who is on your left. Because first is attention. And the few minutes we are getting into... I want to see somebody who would give God such attention that if the person by you even jabs you, you won't even bother. Somebody just jabs you because the person equally wants to praise and jabs you. You would not say, couldn't you see me? Uh -huh. Say, please, be gentle. Though. No. You are giving God your attention. Do you know that if God calls you, and he has, he has been told, he is here to promote you. And you stand as you are going to God. If somebody even steps on your toe, you would just do like this and continue. Am I right? You won't want to bother who is trying to disturb you. And then when you get to his presence, you would, con you would concentrate. So even if a fly is buzzing, you just say, fly, I don't know where you came from. Devil, get away. I am before God. <laughs> attention, affection, adoration, then you begin to say, oh God, <laughs> how great thou art, how great, oh yes, how great God is. <laughs> then, with that, when you then get into worship, you then get lost. You then get lost. That's why in the place of praise, listen, I give you seven things and we get into it. Number one, you, you are directed from your problems, diverted from your pro problems to God, only God. Number two, when you then look at God and God alone, you begin to appreciate him. God, you are so good. I can see you. <laughs> God, there is none else. God, who can make me? You begin to sing. You begin to sing. God, who is sitting down. He that sits in the heaven. By the time you get on and go down, you find that God will stand. And when God stands, your promotion is coming. <laughs> because he will then say, look at this guy concentrating on me. And he has left his problems. He has left this. This problem and this problem. That's why healing would be practical here. You are lifted from the earthly to the heavenly. Lifted from the earthly to the heavenly. When there is real praise. 
you become intimate with God. The more you look at God, the more of God you see, so you become more and more intimate. I can tell you the heart begins to dissolve. The problems begin to dissolve. That's why some people got healed. It's only when they walked out of the meeting they discovered they were healed. They had become intimate with God. Remember, it starts with attention. Then affection. Then adoration. And your intimacy is growing. And when God shows a little bit of who you are, and who he is. And he reminds you of a scripture. He reminds you of a dream. He shows you something in his word. And that you are lifted. You are sitting with Jesus in heavenly places. Far above. How you begin to see yourself in that. And you are looking at him. Where only God is. And man is not. I can tell you. A change in your inner man. A change, the change begins until before you know it, you are lost in God. Shall we stand? It's going to be praises. It's going to be praises. It's going to be praises. I want you to lift your heart and begin to praise him. Did he wake you up this morning? Did God wake you up this morning? That tells me something. Listen, that tells me that he's focusing on you. That's why he woke you up this morning. It tells me if God did not focus on you, he won't wake you up. If God did not focus on you and he wants you to focus on him, that's why I lift your heart and say, God, you are so good. You mean I am special in your sight. You mean I am wonderful. I am precious. Your thoughts towards me are thoughts of greatness. Oh, thoughts of goodness, thoughts of glory. That's why everything that is in me will bless your holy name. Oh, yes, and you are my deliverer. You delivered me from death. That's why I am alive this morning. He delivered you from death. That's why you are alive this morning. If he didn't deliver you from death, you will be dead. He delivered you from death. Death claimed some lives yesterday, but you are alive. And so when you begin to focus on God, you begin to tell him, God, how excellent is your name. How beautiful you are. How wonderful you are. There is none like you. You are greater than the greatest. You are higher than the highest. You are more than enough. There is none like you. You are the Holy One. And you are the only one. You are God. God, your majesty. Your majesty. Your majesty. Your majesty. Your majesty. Oh, yes, the Holy One. And he has made you to sit with him in heavenly places. Oh, God of all glory. God of all blessings. God of all wonder. God of all miracles. God of all might. God of all beauty. God God of all excellence. Oh my God. My God. King of kings and Lord of lords. King of kings and Lord of lords. With whom all things are possible. All things are possible. All things are possible. Oh, the beauty maker. The way maker. The way maker. The, ma the way maker. He makes a way for you, my brother. He makes a way for you, my sister. He makes a way. He makes a way. He makes a way. He makes a way. He makes a way, he makes a way. He makes a way. He makes a way for you. Mamaira, mamaira, oh. He makes a way for you. He made a way for you to be awake this morning. He made a way for you to come to church. He made a way for you to hear his word. He made a way for you to see his beauty. He made a way for you to know that he loves you. He made a way for you to know that there is none else. He made a way. He is the way maker. He is the way maker. He is the way maker. He is the way maker.
Concentrate on him. I want you to bless him. I want you to praise him yourself. There is no one like your God. He defeated death on your behalf. That's why you are alive. He defeated death on your behalf. That's why you are alive. He defeated death on your behalf. That's why you are alive. I want you to give him praise and give him praise and give him praise. Oh yes, he defeated death on your behalf. That's why you are alive. Oh yes. There is none like our God. There is none like your God. He's King of Kings. He's Lord of Lords. He's the precious one. He's the Holy One. He's the Savior. He's the carer. He's the helper. He's the beautifier. He's the way maker. He's your strength. He is your righteousness. He is your protection. Yes, he is your lover. He is your lover. He is Rayma. <laughs> he is my lover. He is my lover. He is my lover. Incredible. He is my lover. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. You are special to him. You are precious to him. 
Yes, you are special to him. You are precious 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 to him. He says he loves you with an everlasting love. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Amen. Let's be seated. Let me give you one testimony. Here was a girl that was bad. She was so bad, she didn't know her father. And her mother, because she was on drugs, and she was sleeping outside. They eventually said, you, your situation is so bad. They put her in the plane, one-way ticket to her father in Hawaii. The father was working in the oil company, but he has blown up all his money. So she got to the airport waiting for her dad, and she sat at the airport for 13 hours. waiting for. When her dad saw her, he didn't recognize her. Because the tattoo, she had witches markings in her face. She recognized the dad. The dad said, listen, I was in the oil company, but I got on drugs. It was so bad. I don't even have a house. I'm sleeping by the beach in a tent. Come with me. So she got to the beach. And there was that tent by the beach. And that's where dad was staying. And she was still high on on drugs. Because that's the only thing she knew. She had never had the name Jesus. Nobody preached to her. She was too bad for anybody to preach to. You get near her, she looks at you with all the things she had. In fact, her picture, you just think this is not just an ordinary witch. It's a super witch. But she needed to continue the drugs. So she sold herself. And with that, selling herself, she continued with the drugs. Her brother heard about her. Her brother prayed, God, save my sister. And in church, he told them, this is the sister's situation. A couple in church said, we are going to take her in. So they went to her and said, we're taking you in. Two conditions. You must go to church with us. That's one condition. You must go to church with us. She said, I've never been to church. As long as you are in this house, do what you like. But Sunday, you are going to church. She said every Sunday, she did everything possible to make them go late. Look at the person by you. She's talking about you now. <laughs> because you late commerce. You won't go late for work, for interview, to get a job, you won't go late. But to church, you will come late. Look at the person by you. Say, don't worry, he's talking about you, but it's all right. She kept on going to, going to church. She would just look at him and come back home. But this couple stayed until she graduated from secondary school. She was still doing her drugs, still her her clothing were very wonderful, still selling herself. But listen, all that time, the eyes of God were on her. She stayed like that <clears throat> until she got pregnant by mistake. Because prostitutes don't get pregnant. Why? You must keep the business on. You need the money. And the day she was going to her boat, as she was going that to her boat, somebody knocked on the door. And the person came and said, listen, you are going to her boat. You will go. The baby will go. 
and say you cannot because the person who wants to do the abortion is already on a red flag with the government. And the person said, listen. The person was equally a prostitute who was equally pregnant. And the person said, God will take care of you and the baby. An unbeliever. She said, no. So she decided not to abort. Then she went to church. And when she got to church, the person said, come, let's go to church. They got to church. She saw people going and praying in tongues and just talking. Languages she didn't understand. She was looking at them. And then somebody walked up to her and said, you want to abort? Don't abort. God will take care of you. In fact, the hand of God is upon you. Laid hands on her. She collapsed there. She began to cry. She cried and cried and cried. There and then, God saved, God baptized in the Holy Spirit. Still with her. The baby was born. She now started <coughs> going to church. She had DUI. <coughs> driving under the influence. That's DUI. That means it's either you're drunk or you're on cocaine. You're not meant to drive. And they had flagged her down. The day of the court, she went to court. She just saw her <clears throat> attorney. She said, can I speak to the DC? That one said, you're already here. You're already here. You are going in for five years. So that's not a problem. She just went to the DC and said, I have something to say to you. She said, yes, the person you flagged down on the road, that person is dead. But I'm a new creature. I am born again. I did all that, but now I am born again. I'm not the same person. The guy looked at her, and the guy said, we all make horrible mistakes. She went and stayed on the dock. Dock is where they put you, and the judge wants to question you. Just when the judge wants to speak, somebody came and gave the judge a paper. The judge looked at the paper and said, discharged and acquitted. She didn't say a word because the Holy Spirit told her, go and tell that person that all things have passed away. I'm a new person. I did it, but that person died. I am alive. Her father, it was too much for the father. It was too much for the mother. It was too much for everybody. But let me tell you, it wasn't too much for the Holy Spirit. His eyes were on her all along. Say after me, the eyes of God are on me. Depression? You have no stay in my life anymore. Trouble? I trouble you. Just know. Then she got born again. She gave back to the child. Gave the child a name. Did not even know the meaning of the name. Then she started worshipping. And worshipping. Then listen. Angels began coming to her. She started seeing angels. The way I look at you. Some of you have not seen any angel. But I, because I love you. I won't tell you to put up your hands. <laughs> you are special before God. Parents. Don't give up on any child. No matter how wild that child is, your prayers are already answered. They are waiting for manifestation. You just hold fast. Something had happened to us and I'd been confessing something, confessing, confessing. Then on Friday, because of something, I started trying to confess another thing. The Lord said, hold fast your confession. The devil that has done this because of this circumstance you want to change. He just told me, he said, hold fast to your confession. Hold fast to your confession. And I was so glad. Say after me, God made me special. I accept it. I believe it. I would say it privately, publicly, internally, externally. Because God has made me special. 
Shall we stand? Don't be the last person to stand. We are still going to worship for two, three minutes. I just want you to raise your hand and bless this God. Bless this God. As you... As you pay attention to him, give him all your attention. Give him all your attention. Give him all your attention. Then give him your affection. Oh, give him your affection, my brother. Give him your affection. Go on to give him your adoration. Yes. And get into worship. You've been faithful Father, we thank you for blessing us, for being good to us. To you alone be 